So we got a crank, but we don't have a start. All right, guys. Well, I know that's not a fun situation to be in. I went over a few things in this video and got the van running again. And hopefully these things can help you get up out on the road and running again. First thing I looked at was I looked at the fuel. I didn't have a pressure gauge or anything. You can see the mice have gotten here. I thought maybe they chewed up a wire, but uh, all is good. You're either not getting fuel, fire, or air. It's one of the three. And uh, well, the first thing I checked out, I thought maybe I wasn't getting fuel. I was out on the road when this broke down. I was actually in Iowa. I'm in Illinois now. We had to get a U-Haul truck to get me back home with the trailer. This is something I could have fixed out on the road if I could have diagnosed it out there. But uh, well, I didn't get the problem figured out on the road. But I got back home and got diagnosed and uh, Anyhow, I'm back running again. The first thing that I checked was the fuel, and you can take a fuel pressure gauge if you have one and put it on here, but I didn't have one, so what I did is uh, I actually moved these, uh, took off this box right up here, and that just clips off on both sides over here. There's clips. That pulls out, and I believe there's a little clip tab, and there's the same thing right there. And right behind there is just the fill rails, and there's this little clip right here. I believe those are 5 sixteenths. Uh, I think they're 5 sixteenths. And I took that out, and I just turned the pump on, and it was squirting off fill, so I knew that was working. But this thing is, you can turn the key forward and press that button here, or this little valve right here. Push it in, and fill will spray out. Um, you can get a fill pressure gauge if you have one. I think it's like 60, 65 PSI is what you're supposed to be getting. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'd have to look that up to give you uh, accurate information on that. But I think it's 60-65 is where it should be around. I didn't think it was a fuel issue, but I wanted to get that out of the way first. And then what I did is I had a spare spark plug wire right here. A plug wire here to the boot. Grounded it out here on the head. Over here on the header or the manifold. And uh, crank, 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 no start. I even got to the point where I was pretty desperate when I was broke down on the side of the road where I just grabbed the wire and held it. The old key, the crank and turn, and uh, I didn't get electrocuted. I didn't get shocked or anything. I changed out the coil. Um, I have a spare coil. I actually got to take one back now. But I have a spare coil. I bought a new one just in case this, this one was bad and my spare was bad. But I hooked up the coil, unplugged the coil, and plugged it in. And it doesn't have to be grounded down. Um, you know, it sounds crazy because it is grounded down to the frame. But if you're replacing the coil, you can pull the wire off here in that clip. And I could have a coil sitting right here in my hand. Uh, or sitting right up here and it would run. Um, I've done that test a couple times now, but uh, so I tested the coil. I put a different co I put a different coil on it and I tested it and it was still doing the same same thing. It wasn't starting, so I knew it wasn't the coil. Um, that wasn't the problem of the spark. So I came over here to the ICM, which is the stands for Control Modular, I believe. Put a new one of those on. Same problem. It was still cranking. No spark. I didn't hook the plug back up to it, but it wasn't firing, so I knew I wasn't getting spark. Something else that I also did, this is, uh, this, I've had this problem before in the past. This is a spare cap and rotor that I had, and uh, I pulled off the cap and rotor. That was actually the first thing I did here, and I wanted to make sure that the points inside weren't rusty and stuff. This is my spare one, but you can kind of see, at one time, I think this one was corroded and I cleaned it up. I mean, I could clean up a little better, but, uh. You can tell when you pull them off. I mean, when they're bad and they're not starting, these pieces are have like all kind of funky stuff all over it, kind of corrosion and stuff. And the same thing right here is kind of all corroded around the points right there. That was the first thing I did because, I mean, that thing spins around. And it, goes, it goes in there, and as the distributor turns, this thing goes around inside. And, uh, well, if your contact points are rusty and that thing's rusty, you're not going to have a good electrical connection, and that's going to be the cause of the problem. Wasn't, that wasn't the problem, so I could rule that out right away. Uh, changed out the ignition coil, put a new one on there, and just hooked it up to see if it would run. And no, same problem, it wasn't running. Put a new ICM piece on there. Uh, same problem, wasn't running. So what it came out to be, guys, is it came out to be the crank sensor. This is the crankshaft position sensor. And this was the reason that my uh, engine wasn't starting. I wasn't getting any spark. Uh, this is actually magnetic right here. All right, I'll take you out and show you where it's at on the van. It's in the same spot for all 4.3 Chevys, GMC Chevys, 4.3 engines, the Vortex. All right, we're just going underneath the van right now. This is the pulley right here. You can see, I think, believe that's the, the rider pulley right there, or that's the fan clutch. Uh, 
anyways got the oil pan right here if you just come back from the top of the oil pan and you get right behind the pulley here right here that is the crankshaft position sensor and it's just one bolt holding it on and then you got a plug-in sensor right here it's just a little bolt right there and uh, yeah that was a problem why my van wasn't started all right guys that's definitely not a fun situation and I hope this video can help you out and get you back running and on the road again